put you on. Hang on. Good morning, morning, everybody. I'm delighted to be here too. Oh, I can't walk away from here, can I? <laughs> <laughs> um, to represent the North. Um, this is Port Sully. You can just see us there. Uh, on the Murray Firth, uh, once uh, very much uh, an area involved in the fishing industry, but like many of the small villages all around our coast, the fishing is almost gone. Um, Port Sully itself was a trading harbour, however, with lots of links across the North Sea, across to Scandinavia and, and North Germany and the Low Countries, uh, as they call them. We find that now we are really quite dependent on visitors and on tourism because the industry uh, is, has, along with the fishing, has collapsed pretty pretty much. Uh, there are big centres in Fraserburgh and Peterhead and Aberdeen, uh, but along, along the north coast there's very little. We have a lot of, we have um, a beautiful coastline, which is quite often is ignored because people will come from Edinburgh up to Inverness, across the Western Isles, down to Glasgow, and miss out our bit. Oh, it's beautiful. And you re if you haven't been, you should really make a point of going there. Okay, th that's where we are. Oh, wrong way. Yeah. Uh, this is what Port Soil looks like from the ear. Uh, the important part is this here. That's the old harbour, which was built in the 1700s, and the new harbour, which was built in the 1820s. <coughs> the old harbour was built as a trading harbour, as I mentioned, for um, links across to Europe, and the new harbour was built for the, the, fish, the herring fishing industry, where a small community of about 2,000 people, however, something remarkable happens in Port Soy once a year, and that is the boat festival. Now, I've got a lot, lot of images here, and I'm going to crack through them. Uh, if there's something you're really interested in that I haven't spent time on, uh, you can come and speak to me at some of the breaks, because I've got them on my laptop. So I'm going to go quite fast. Um, the Scottish Traditional Boat Festival. It's when the old harbour was 300 years old, uh, the, the community held a celebration, and at that time it was called the Small Boats Festival. It grew into the Scottish International Traditional Boat Festival from there. So, small village, at boat festival time, I, I mentioned 2,000 people in the community, boat festival weekend, we can have 15,000. So it makes a huge difference for our community. Uh, you maybe some of you people maybe recognise uh, Reaper, Isabella Fortuna, uh, White Wing, some of the fantastic traditional boats that are housed around our coast, come into our little harbour. Uh, we have a fabulous time of. Oh, no. Can I turn on the mic real quick? We have a lovely time of sailing, and of course the sun always shines in Port Soy. <laughs> um, sailing, rowing, we'll come back to rowing. Maybe some of you people know about the St. Ailes skiffs and how communities, how this has evolved uh, with communities and how fantastic it is. I'll tell you some more about that later on. But it's fabulous. If you haven't been involved in traditional rowing, go for it. Uh, our particular uh, small club in Port Soy has uh, members for age from 14 to over 70. So there's no barrier to anybody going, going there. <laughs> and of course, we have uh, during the boat festival, we have lots of music. And the sun always shines in Port Soy. <laughs> That's usually the kind of crowd there is. There are big concerts in uh, Marquis, well-known piece. There's lots of street music on every corner. Uh, these are Norwegian choirs. Uh, we have a, quite a, a, an international group of people who like to come to our festival. Uh, this... I can't do that, can I? <laughs> uh, this particular lot are a church group. Uh, this, these were shanty singers 
from, from both of them from Norway, and they have a ball when they when they come to Scotland. They just love it. They, they find quite a lot of links. I'm a Northeast speaker. I speak Doric, uh, and I can understand a lot of what they say. So there's quite a lot of links uh, across the North Sea. Um, lots of craft de demonstrations, traditional tra crafts, all kinds of things, spinning, knitting, food. Um, we have a big food fair, which is a whole marquee, and some people come to the festival specially for just for the food. It's worth, worth definitely worth a visit. Lots of uh, local producers promoted all around. Demonstrations. This is Mr. Spink from our broth who comes and makes smokies, and there's always a big queue. Uh, they always have them next to the beer tent as well. Uh, lots of activities for for families, all the kinds of things that kids like to do, particularly focusing on sailing on the small pond. Um, there is a road race for the energetic, there's a 2k and a 10k. Um, this year we had f uh, a fabulous uh, exchange group with Latvia and Estonia. And we had 60 um, demonstrators uh, from Latvia and Estonia who lived in small pods, well, not quite tents, but made from timber. Um, and there they are uh, on the shore. Uh, they brought music and food and craft, and they were fabulous. And then later on in the summer, some of them at Jeff. Uh, sorry, the Portsoi people went across. Oh, I'm going off again. Uh, so went across uh, to Estonia and took part in one of their uh, projects. And there's more to come. Okay, apart from the festival, a lot of things have uh, arisen from that. We have a big connection to music. We we have. I could do you a whole talk about music, but I'm not. So this, the primary schools are very much involved in, the, in music and music making. Um, also, older children who have got particular skills in music making are brought together and given the opportunity to play together. So, but I'm not going to speak about that so much uh, as about boats and boat building. Um, one of our volunteers, and the whole thing, I have to say, is run by volunteers, um, he said that he got fed up with these kids, older kids, sitting on his windowsill, uh, not doing anything. So he and a friend began a boat building project. These were youngsters. They began really, I think they were maybe about 12, 13 years old when they began to be involved in this. And they built this small boat. It was a fairing. And... By the end, this ran for about four or five years, this project, um, the older boys knew the skills and were teaching them to the younger ones, these traditional boat things, uh, and doing things that they maybe wouldn't have expected. For, for example, that kid that is up there in the, in, in the corner there said, I never knew I was going to have to learn how to sew to be able to do this project. Doing sail making. Um, that's their Finnish boat, and I loved it. They called it Ur Booty. Um, and kids who would hardly say more than a couple of words to you were standing up demonstrating to the public, and their confidence had grown fantastically. Uh, from the original boat building project, we went into the primary schools, and this is where I was uh, involved. We began by building Optimus dinghies. So anybody who knows about sailing probably knows that these are super little um, stable boats which are perfect to learn to uh, sail in, but they're also very easy to build. We were astounded by how well the primary school kids took to this. They absolutely loved it. Uh, girls particularly were very good at it. So, with the help of our volunteers, drilling, screwing, countersinking, gluing, measuring, interacting with each other, problem solving, the whole range uh, was undertaken. 
it's one of, one of their little boaties nearly finished. And there they are sailing them on the local pond. And it was fabulous. Uh, over seven years, we've built 67 of those um, and involved more than 700 kids. We had to change the design, however, because that particular pond doesn't get very good wind. So we changed it from the optimists to the pessimists. And the pessimists were for paddling. And then, for various reasons, we had to uh, go into the schools and build more or less like um, flat packs in the schools. And we called them the pragmatists. So the pragmatists were, were there. But the kids absolutely loved it. Uh, and as a result, some of these 700 kids, when they went up to the academy, wanted to continue. Um, so it began as a lunchtime club run by our volunteers, uh, boat building, and it were, when the Her Majesty's Inspectors of Schools came to Banff Academy, that was one of the things that was picked up, was how positive the boat building was and what kids got out of it. Um, so it is now, there are two full-time classes of boat building happening, still run by our volunteers with the help of the technical department at Banff Academy. Also from there, Chevron, the, the oil company, uh, gave us funding to support a group of youngsters who found school particularly difficult. These weren't kids who had learning difficulties, but they didn't want to be in school, to be honest. They didn't want to be sitting at desks writing essays. Uh, so again, with our volunteers and with funding, these youngsters uh, come once a week and work uh, in our boat shed, which I'll tell you more of in a minute. But again, these are youngsters who would hardly speak to you. And here they are. This is the chap in the middle is the chairperson. Um, there's also the head of Chevron. There's our MP. There's head of education in Aberdeenshire, and Pete is one of the volunteers. And if you see over at the other side, these are the kids who wouldn't speak to you um, really now, uh, taken off and quite confidently, hello, have I done something? It's not moving. Press escape. Escape key. Escape? No. Okay. Okay. Okay, another, another thing that happened regarding boat building, I mentioned earlier, was the St. Ailes, building of St. Ailes Skiff. Um, Pete, who had, was involved with the youngsters' boat building, um, thought that the youngsters could build a St. Ailes Skiff. But the youngsters had moved on, gone to university, got jobs, and the kit for St. Ailes Skiffs was left. The woman in Pertsoy took it on, and I was really delighted about that. It was the first St. Hale skiff, in, certainly in Scotland, to be built by an all-woman crew. And they were, they were <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> Some, somebody, and I, th I suspect it was Pete, uh, facetiously said, suppose you're going to paint it pink? And they said, yes. Uh, and so they did. So they raised money and they had, they, they had a fabulous time. And there, there, I have to say, it wasn't just the women. There was various dads and next door neighbours came and lent, lent a hand. And so um, there it was. Um, they're very seaworthy little boats. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. That's it coming out of the harbour. Um, in this bottom picture is my husband who's sitting over there. He, he was coxing. There are four rowers, so four women are rowing, and my husband was coxing, and he said, they couldn't see what was coming, but I could. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of big waves. Not to be outdone, the men built uh, another one. Oh, I should have said that the woman called their boat Soy Quine, which is girl, and the boys built Soy Loon, which, uh, which is the, which is the uh, Soy Boy. Uh, we now have a soy lassie, a soy lady, we've got a soy bairn, I think we've even got a soy futret as well. So, so, huge community involvement and it's in all kinds of weathers, involving all kinds of people, lots of competition, lots of socialising. Um, this is actually up, on, up at Och, up in the Black Isle, 
and these are youngsters from the local academy. And you can see it's the green boat and the, but the pink oars, so there's no demarcation <laughs> between the, between the, the rowers. Uh, and another thing that happened w was that salmon fishing had collapsed. We were given an old salmon fishing boat, a cobble. Uh, it was absolutely derelict. Uh, it was beyond redemption. But the volunteers took it apart, took all the measurements, um, and we now have a complete record of how it was built, because the old boys that built them never used plans. Um, this is, it went through the whole process, right from the timber, through the building, and here it is nearly complete, and here it is in the harbour, it's <coughs> that soil lady now, and there it is out at sea. It was a fabulous day, I have to tell you. We were del so delighted to get it finished. The other thing, apart from boats and boat building, has been developing the physical ass assets around Portsoy. There were a lot of derelict buildings. That's one. Uh, this was the salmon fishing ice house. Downstairs were the ice chambers. Upstairs was a net loft. Um, salmon fishing collapsed in Portsoy in 1990, uh, and the building was, was abandoned. However, local people thought, it's a good building. We like it. Uh, so they took on to raise over £400,000, and that's what it looks like now. Um, there, um, there is a museum downstairs. There's the net loft has become a performance area and hub, uh, and there's a place for investigating genealogy. It's a centre for music. There have been weddings in it. There's... Uh, a book festival, the meters I mentioned, and all kinds of other things have arisen as a result of having this uh, wonderful space upstairs. These are the wonderful knitting ladies. And I have to, well, I have to come back to that one. Uh, we, have, we have the... The Uphelia squad has been down a couple of times. So you'll no, maybe notice over in the far corner the ladies all knitted beards so they could be, be part of that. But apart from that, they, they raise, raise lots of money for, um, for charities. And, and they're just a fabulous group. I, I love them. This is knitted perch soy that they knitted up above them. Uh, we have a wonderful folk club. It has a, its own festival. And it's got... Oh, we have international people come. Um, this year will be the 10th. It's called the Hal Festival, as in hauling in a net full of um, fish. So it's a Hal Festival. Look out for it. Um, we have who have we got coming? Archie. Archie. Somebody Dixon. Barbara Dixon uh, are going to be the star. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Another thing that happened was the, our local council gave up the caravan park because apparently it wasn't making money. Um, so the community took it on. So there it is. And I have to say, yes, it is making money. It's needing a bit of attention. Uh, but especially at Boat Festival weekend, it's full. Uh, we have a lot of people now in camper vans. There, that seems to be the things that are rather than, um, than caravans. But we have a lot of people. The other thing was another derelict building. Uh, this was a, a, a farmer warehouse. It's next, so you can maybe just see um, a, white, a white building. Uh, that's the Shore Inn. Um, and this derelict building was known locally as the Shore Oot. So um, it was taken on as a place for boat building because we thought we needed one, because before, up till then all the boat building had been in people's sheds and all, you know, all around the town. So it was taken on, huge amount of money was raised, uh, terrific um, energy was put into the development of the boat shed. It's now won several prizes for its design um, as a regeneration of a heritage building. The boat builders would tell you, oh, well, but it's not got... But there it is. It's, it's a building that is so fantastic. 
um, in appearance. Uh, we ha it was opened by the Duke of Kent. We think that he had a, a job lot to do. He came and opened several things in the area on the same day. <laughs> uh, but he came to, came to us as well. So. Um, this is one of the, the projects that the guys have been working on. This is sea spray. It is a Zulu skiff, one of the traditional uh, designs of boats. And again, the volunteers all working, developing their own skills. There they are. And finally, the last thing that we took on was another derelict building. That one. Um, it was a former rope and sail making works. The actual rope works had fallen into the sea a long time ago. Uh, but that was what was left. It was over in a bit of the town called Bat Green. So plans were built up to make it be bunk house accommodation. This is part of the work going on. That's what it looks like now. And th there it is. Round the back there is a wonderful hot tub. So I would recommend it. It has 25 really nice bedrooms. Um, and some, a nice dining area and so on. So if you're visiting Port Soy, there's really nice budget accommodation for you, for you to, to, to come and stay in. Um, it's, this is its second year, so it's really just building its reputation, so I would encourage people to come and visit. So, that's the story of Port Soy. Um, from the boat festival, the salmon bothy, the boat shed, the sail loft and the caravan park. And we, the community decided it was no longer just a boat festival. So they had to rename themselves. Uh, because also we had a lot of lakes across the North Sea, the North Sea Ring. Uh, we have lots of those people coming to visit us. These are some of the Scandinavians, who, the Norwegian people from the Forbundet Shirsten who come to the festival. But now it's been renamed not the Boat Festival, but the Port Soy Community Enterprise, which sounds terribly posh. <laughs> uh, however, we have had to become a company limited by liability, and we're a, a charity, a, a, a registered charity. It's all done by volunteers, although we've had to employ people. We now have got a full-time boat builder working in the boat shed. We've had uh, got people working in the sail loft and uh, around the town doing various other bits and pieces. But in general, everything is done by volunteers. Uh, we had a visit from Aberdeen University who were looking at communities that ran festivals. And they said they were looking at why it worked in Port Soy. And they decided we were the right size. There are enough people uh, to support any kind of developments but not, we're not so big that there are people with their own agendas. Uh, so in, uh, for that reason, it works. Also, I have to say, we've got some very able and dynamic people who really drive it. Um, you are very welcome to come along at any time. If you have any questions, to ask me later, because I, I know that I'm running over. Um, so thank you very much for listening, everybody. I do hope that we'll see you up north in Portsoy. Thank you.